I've started here. Yeah. So, hello guys. So, welcome to today's uh, session. So, first, uh, I think I'll have to apologize. I started like almost 15 minutes late because of uh, our issues here, yeah, but here we are. So, so, this month we've been doing Flutter series. We had the first one with uh, Danvik. We talked about uh, did it all ah, I even forgot here, yeah, but yeah, the second uh, session was with uh, Maureen Josephine, and now the final session of uh, this month Flutter series is from, from Frank Tamre, who is, a, who is a developer at Snap Mobile, yeah, and also the organizer of 254. Yeah, so we're privileged to having Frank today. He's one of the top tech speakers we have currently in the, in the country, and he's always an honor having him presenting and sharing his knowledge with us. Uh, so I just go straight into just a little about Geekstock Thursday, and I hope I'm so adequate enough. So Geekstock Thursday is a community that started in, in Eldoret with a with a motto of let the community speak. So we just meet virtually every Thursday at 8, 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. just discussing about different tech stuff. Yeah, so today I'll not be having the presentation, presentation slide because I'm, I'm doing this for my phone here, yeah, but uh, I just go straight into introducing Frank will take off on this place. So Frank will be presenting about fluttering with the design systems yeah so i think at this point uh i just uh, welcome frank to take over and yeah so okay. after this i'll go to me later okay cool um so thanks uh emmanuel and uh thanks geeks talk family members so uh, my name is Frank Tamre. i'm on twitter my handle is at Tamre frank i am just a normal human being I am currently writing code with Snap Mobile that is like do all this like contractual stuff and the building um uh insane amount of work. So my my experience with Flutter actually funny enough is that I think approximately I swear there to be one more month. So so let's say eleven months ago, I was making fun of Flutter and I was like I was no way I was ever going to touch Flutter. Um but then I think from uh, for the last couple of months, I've been playing around with Flutter so and, and developing systems with it. So then I've, I've come to understand and appreciate um, the power that that has and, and, and Flutter has, especially when you talk about like UI bits um, for that matter, like how easy it is to quickly spin up UIs, both for mobile and for web, and easily bring out very amazing UIs. And so for today, my focus will be on talking about um, design system. Uh, and that's like one of the things that I've, I've come to interact with over the last couple of months. And it has been, let me just say the truth, it has been really, really interesting um, getting to learn more about this topic. So, uh, so, so the first thing when you talk about like design systems is all of us are software engineers. And so one of the things that you quickly realize when, whenever we are like building code or, or trying to do anything for that matter is, we quickly realize that we spend um, a lot of time when you're doing code so like depending on how complex or bad that code is or, or like how confusing it is let me not say bad how uh, confusing it is so we can spend a lot of time like looking at code reviews and wondering like hey um what's happening here um and so the other thing that we have within all teams that are building software is we have this like an I'd say like an internal battle between designers and developers, which ideally it's not supposed to be there. So then you have designers building a certain design and then saying, hey, you know what, um, this is the design that you want the developers to use. But then the developers feel like, hey, uh, why are you giving us designs that look like this, you know? Um, and so there's all this like fight that, that happens there. Um, and then again, because of these fights that happen between the developers and the designers, they can even start to impact again the code reviews. Um, and so one of the things that you quickly start to realize or ask yourself is, okay, cool. Um, that is, that is a, those are like two challenges that we've talked about, or three if you look at it in terms of the way I've broken it down. 
um, because the contributors can also go to that bit where you're looking at the design reviews, especially now when you have your project manager there, and so the head of tech, and then you have the project manager, and the project manager feels like, no, 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 you get, you know, to implement this UI looking very well. Um, the other thing that I think I realized when I was coming into Flutter was that there's, there's, there's like, it looked like there's a lot of chaos. Uh, and I remember like the first days just like talking with some of my friends as I asked them like, hey, by the way, uh, what's up with this? There's, and this chaos, I think it's because it, appear, it appears to be chaos because there's a lot of freedom that is accorded uh, by the framework. And so, uh, so if you want to do something, you could always do it in different ways. And what do I mean by this chaos? Like a good example of this is there are all these various ways of implementing a UI script. Um, I'll show you examples of UI screens um, uh, later on and like to be specific on what I'm working on. So don't worry, this is not one of those presentations that's like kill me by slides or something, no. Um, so that's the thing. So then you have all these various ways to implement a UI screen. And, and, and I guess the chaos now starts to pop up and you have all of this drama that happens. And the key thing is from the time you're talking about the code reviews, the battle with the developers and the designers and you're moving all the way down, one of the things that you start to realize is that there's a lot of chaos. But we shouldn't be having chaos inside our teams. Um, so how do we get rid of this chaos? And it's like one of the ways, I'm not saying this is the only way of doing it, but one of the ways is, is using a design system. And 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 all these chaos I've seen like in the teams I've worked with is like um the first I said using this is there's very few friction between having discussions about, oh, no, 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 this design wasn't implemented well, and this year wasn't implemented well, because everything is just there. So um, so the thing I want to talk about today is a design system and what a design system is. And what we're going to cover is what it is, how do you create one, uh, why should you not use it, and why should you use it? Because for everything that you present before people have quickly come to learn that you have to give them what are the pros and cons of using these things, because even for me, I am very, opinionated about the same thing. I have my reasons why you should not use it and why I should also use it. I guess when you come out of the call, you'd be able to decide and say, okay, cool, maybe I'm going to use this, or maybe he scared doesn't make sense. I'm still sticking to my way. So um, so what does it mean? Uh, uh, what does a design system mean? So this is like a singular way to group UI in elements, uh, UI elements in a project. And so you'd have different things, like if you have a UI, um, screen you'd have different things that you want to arrange there and i'm going to base my session on on an app that i'm building or i'm developing right now um just as a side project so uh, i hope i hope it's going to make sense for everyone so so the best the best one of the things that i think you quickly start to realize when you are talking about a system a design system for that matter is that it is going to be composed of something and so there's a composition and, and for a design system, essentially, it's composed of four main elements. And that's the first thing is it's a token, um, and then a, a component, and then you have guidelines or principles, and then you have tools. So I'm going to break down all of this uh, in terms of explaining what a design system is and how it will be relevant for you. So the first thing within Flutter, within the, the, whole, the whole ecosystem of Flutter, when you talk about tokens, we are talking about a visual design. This is like values and attributes that ensure branding and UI consistency is the same all around. And when you talk about tokens, you're really looking at the, the minutest things that you can compose a UI element or a widget or, or, or a component with. And so a um, good example for this, as I was telling you, is you could have something like font and colors. And this is like the same thing. And so when you have, uh, when you're thinking about your tokens, you're thinking about, okay, what are the colors I'm going to use and what are the fonts that I'm going to use or text that I'm going to use. And this essentially are the building blocks of any application. Like an application will definitely have colors, it will definitely have text, even games. They will have to have this in some way or the other. Um, I've deliberately not included images because you can do an app without images. Um, um, yeah, you can do an app without images, but then you can it without like fonts and colors and so you have the colors there um, and different colors have different things and so normally within a design system you'd have something like this so previously someone would tell you we are using um like the second uh color there is black but then it's one three one three one three and then you have different shades of white and so you have uh the ef 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 and then you have f6 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 they are yes whitish and then again you have the full six f's 
And so those are differentiates of y. So how would you like differentiate them? Do you want to keep on using f, 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 f6, or do you want to use different ways? I'm going to show you how I sort of like managed to go through the, the challenge. I'm just giving that context of what makes like a token. Another example of a token would be you'd have, and I'm, I'm drawing all this from the design system or the design that I'm using for the application I'm building. Um, so you'd have like main colors. So then you'd have like, this is my app. The main colors of my application are FF4343 and F6, F6, F6. And so the difference is what you have is, is that you have, again, you have your white, but then you have two shades of white. Um, and then you have your green and then you have your black. Now, if you look at this black here, this black here is zero six times, but then I have another black that is one, three, one, three, one, three. And these two things mean two different things. Um, and so again, uh, another one, which I'm using, again, I'm using three designs and I'll explain to you why I'm using these three tokens there. You have the typography. So this font here uses this DM Sans, but then I also have Gilroy, um, you know, and there's this DM Sans. And so one of the things again is look at the color again. You have a blue, you have a gray, the gray has two shades. There's like dark gray and there's light gray. And then there's this color that looks Mm, depending on who you're talking to, one person will tell you that is red, one person will tell you that is amber, one person will tell you that is orange, one person will tell you that is pff, God knows, burnt red. Nowadays, there's so many shades. It's like you tell a guy and a lady to tell you about the colors, you would be shocked. Um, probably a lady would be very accurate <laughs> about this compared to anyone else. So, um, and this is just based on my experience, by the way. Uh, and so the other thing that you quickly start to see here is those are just like the tokens. So these are like the minutest things that you would have within your application. Um, and so the next thing that you'd have again here is, is within your whole um, design system is I've talked about tokens. And so the other thing is components. And when you talk about components within Flutter, uh, what you're referring to is think of this UI. When I want to build this UI, which is one of the UIs that I'm building for the application, is there so many things that are here. And so top right, there's the icon of a person. Then you have the hamburger menu over there uh, that can probably open a sidebar or it will do something. And then you have the text of hello, Antonio, find your perfect job. And so you have that component for the search widget. Uh, and then you'd have the different product design and development. Those are like the different blocks that you would have to sift through the type of um, jobs that someone is probably looking for. Um, and then you have the cards, which are essentially um, a block that has the different um, jobs that exist. And so someone could swipe across and easily see all of them. And then again, you have another type of card that is down there that is now lists, sort of like becomes like this list, a very rich list element um, that is there, that there goes all the way down. Now, um, if I would break down what a component would be is, we would look at this. So like, if you look at this, uh card here so this card is for google role which is a lead product manager that someone's gonna make eight thousand dollars and you're gonna be based in tokyo japan and so obviously someone has clicked they like it and so that's what's going to be saved there uh by them and so you have that icon for like um that is there and so you can swipe across swipe like that and then you can save the job now that is just like an example of it so if you if you, if you look at these components that exist here, I've just isolated one of them and that's what I would do now. Don't forget the tokens and the components because I'm gonna to touch on that later on. So then you have the other thing that you have within a design system is you have guidelines and principles. And when you talk about guidelines and principles within a design system, um, here we are essentially talking about, hey, um, what are this set of rules or what are the guides, what are the best practices? that are going to guide us so that we have this consistent and, and user-friendly product experiences. And so the, the different types that exist here is, is one of the guidelines. And I mean, like you could have so many of them within your company or within the team that you're working with. Um, but I also like summarized all of them uh, to be three of them. And the three things are number one, it is essentially all your principles have to be clear. <clears throat> Sorry, or whatever thing you're designing has to be clear. Uh, by clarity here, I mean, um, if I'm building, if I'm building, um, if, I'm, if I'm saying like, hey guys, this is the design system that you're going to use. Um, one is we have to eliminate ambiguity. We have to enable people to see, and then people need to understand, and then people can actually implement these code bases with confidence um, and, and act on, on all of this. So that is the first thing is that it needs to be really clear. So clarity is important. 
the other thing is that it needs to be efficient. And when we talk about efficiency here, um, I'm talking about like how do you streamline and optimize people's workflow so that people can anticipate the needs so that people can work better. So then if you're building like this card, when you're thinking about your design system, you've thought about, hey, uh, this design system is gonna be used by developers. So have I put better documentation here that people can understand how to implement it? Is it something that people are gonna be able to work better and faster and smarter? So then if I'm coming in and I need to implement um, this UI here, I don't need to think about building this whole card again. No, the card is already built. I can just come in and implement it and move on. I don't need to think about the color. The color is already there and it's going to be fine. And so that's efficient. And consistency also is when we talk about Flutter, we all know that we are referring to um, code ones. You can publish this to different platforms. And so you're talking about uh, iOS, Android, and web, um, and now even desktop applications. So, um, it's something that you can actually do it. Yes, is it consistent across the board or it's not consistent across the board? So quickly you start to look at some certain things here, which is, um, is, is there familiarity uh, in this? Like if you're implementing a button, is it similar across or have you not thought about that? So there is a problem of design. Are you applying the same solution all through or is it something that is going to change? Is it something that is changing all the time, all the time? And so in one UI, it looks like this. The other one, it looks like this. Then there's all these changes that exist there. So you have to think about all of those things. And those are like, um, those are just like the principles or the guidelines that you would be thinking about. Uh, the other thing now is what actually characterizes a design system is the tools. What tools are you using as, as, as a person? Um, I've said, don't worry, that would be good. Um, so the tools that you're using here is, are you looking at, do you want to use Figma? Um, are you using Adobe XD? Is it Zeppelin? Is it Sketch? Is it custom plugins? You know, And these custom plugins are custom plugins for either Figma, Adobe, Zeppelin, Sketch, Photoshop, name it, whatever. Um, and the last tool which is very important is you can put your tool here. Whatever tool you use so that you can actually enable um, communication between uh, the developers and the designers. So now that we've talked about like okay cool this is the design system um this is it so how do you create it um and so the different ways of approaching that whole creation of a design system and you're gonna see it in practice in a few minutes so if you look at it is the first approach is you style the tokens um and so when i say style the tokens here's where you're thinking about look i have my i have my different types of of, 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 of text and colors. And so I'll say, hey, you know what, these are gonna be my tokens and then these tokens are going to be uh, used on top there. And so you can say, let me style my tokens. And so that means you get to override the default material or Cupertino um, uh, a, a, a text just that exist. And so you sort of like create your own, but then you, you're sort of like just extending the text that is there or creating your own custom text and giving it different sizes and different colors and all those things. Um, the other approach that you can use is styling bigger widgets. So then a good example is with the card that we were talking about earlier. So then you'd have, hey, you know what, this is a card. I don't need to style the small components like text and everything because I'm just going to use the material design components um, because the font you can just easily like, like call it and you don't need to think about it. So you have your text there, you can easily have your big, big widgets there. And so when someone comes to implement, they just take this bigger, I'm calling bigger in quotes, uh, you can have your bigger widgets there. And so you have your cards there, you have your search fields there, you have your navigations there, you have your hamburger menus, you have your bottom, uh, like a nav sheet. So you have all those things implemented. Um, and so that's, that's the other way that you would use. Now my favorite approach is you styling both. So you're styling both the tokens and then you're styling both the larger components. And so for this, uh, the best thing that you do here is you're thinking about, hey, I want to build like a button. And so what does the button constitute of? My button constitutes of both the, uh, the text component and, you know, uh, a text component is probably going to be color here and it's going to take a specific rectangular shape. I want it to be curved at the edges. Um, if you look at the card, it's the same thing. There is this rectangle that is curved at the edges that I want to actually use there, you know, and just like implement it. So that's, that's the approach that you would use for styling, like styling both of them. Um, I love this last one because it's very, you, you won't run into cases where someone is busy altering text that exists. Um, and so 
uh, when I talk about, uh, when I talk about this like code slide, uh, so the code slide is, so this is the repository that I'm doing. Um, I've not pushed some changes yet because I'm still thinking around some certain things and implementing. But like if you look at uh, it's here, it's, if you go to my GitHub handle, Tanzi, it's called Job Finder. Um, but over and above this, so let me talk about how this came about. So then I have these three triple shots. I was searching for, hey, can I build an app that can be used by people who are searching for jobs? And so you have these UIs here and different text from one person. Um, the links are here. I mean, you can just always go and check it out. And big shout out to this guy, Imran. Uh, also, a big shout out to Lojo. I think it's Imran Lojo. This is the team. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, that is Patrick Pollack and Iga. And then the last one constituted from uh, Michelle or Mi Mikel, whichever way it's pronounced, and Ashkar. And so these are the UIs that exist for all of them. And so how do I combine ideas from now? Let's say I'm having this like, team of virtual designers and I want to implement this here. And so going around this is, it's gonna be really straightforward. Uh, not straightforward, but say. So the first thing for me was to think about the following things here. So if you look at all of those things, they have like a text component. And so for the beauty or the advantage that I had was that these guys were like, you know what, this is a font that we want to use. Um, and so there's children here. They don't give the sizes, but then they also give the colors. Um, and then there is the other thing here that was more, they're also using children. So then the common thing here was children is one of the fonts that we have to use. And then the colors are there. And so you have different shades of white. And then I come here and do the same thing. And I went for, this is the first part I start with, is that do you have, what, are, what is the text and what's the, the font that I'm going to use? And so I have the DM sans. And so, when I wanted to combine all of this, my thoughts were around, hey, um, I'm gonna start by creating like a theme file here. Now, this is one of the approaches that I'm gonna talk about. It's very simplistic, straightforward. Um, and so what you'd have is, I thought about what are the colors that I have here. So instead of someone calling it RGB, like this, using this hashtag, which can easily get lost amongst different people, especially if they're coding, was for me to easily, um, I don't know if you can see this, uh, let me just get into presentation mode. Uh, no, yeah. What happened? Oh yeah, cool, 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 yeah. And so the first thing was to think about, okay, so look, so these are the colors that are here. Um, I have different things that I'm putting um, for different reasons. Um, and so, so, so then again, I'm actually writing documentation so that if you have access to this file, you easily like make the changes as, as you want. So the first thing I did was to think about like, look, okay, cool. So I'm gonna make like this class that handles all of this uh, colors here. And so I have my bluish, dark bluish, black, reddish, warm red, uh, that color there. I have red and then I have warm red, uh, lime greenish. Uh, I can actually change this to call it to Cheva I could call this the even plant, you know, but it's easy. I, I'm using these names so that it's easy for someone to actually identify them. Um, and so for dark blue, it's there. For black, it's there. And the black is not in black. And so I'm RGBO and not the default hashtag because this gives me an option to also add different levels of um, uh, transparency if I were to add transparency, you see. Uh, and so I also have button red here. Again, changing this value here, we change how the sun appears. And so the first thing was create these colors. And then once I create the colors, then I build this like theme data class here. And so I have my theme data is here. And so I fix bluish, which I can call everywhere um, here. And then I go to the text field. So what are the type of text fields I have? I have the upper header and I sort of like I'm reducing it going down. So one thing you'll see if you use this, um, uh, if you look, if you go through the project is that I'm, I'm deliberately not using um, even numbers. I'm using odd numbers like seven, three, you know, things like that. So um, that's just a preference. So don't ask me why you're using this kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so then you have that. So for instance, if you look at the upper description text, I'll have my text style. Again, as I say, it did have, you'd explain and say the font size, I want it to be this, the height, I want it to be this, that's the height of the, 
of, 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 the, of the font. And then the letter spacing will be 0 0.3. I take the font family from Gilroy. Um, if you write code for Flutter, you know we'll have to add this, um, the pub spec uh, file. And now I'm implementing it here. And then I put a font to it. And then, uh, yeah, and then I give it a color. So then the downside for this is if I have to change this somewhere else, it's definitely going to be a problem because then I'll have to change this. But then by default, I'm using my blacks and my grays. Why am I using my blacks and my gray? It's because if I go back to my designs, um, all of my colors are just playing around there, uh, this grayish color there. And so if you look at that's the first thing I did was look at the whole UI. And that's the process that you probably have to follow if you're building your UI. So you look at what are the these, what are the UIs? What's the UI? What's the general UI of all the whole app? Okay, cool. So I'm looking at text. So you spend one time looking at all the text and you break it down. And then after I looked at all the text and broken it down, my next thing was to say what are the colors that exist and then I define them there. And so that's that's exactly what I was doing here. Um, and so once I just explain the text, um, once I've done like the text and everything, so the next phase for me was to say, okay, cool, I've done that. Um, let me let me look at uh, let me let me just leave this. Uh, yeah, so let me look at let me look at another bit, and, and the other bit that I wanted to look at was okay, cool. So I've done the theme. Um, one of the other components that I think is really important is is how do you test them? So for instance, the first thing I start with is is normally the text. So just confirming that the text is there because again, the text is really important and that's what you're going to use there. And so a good example for this is let's look at, for instance, something like the upper. So I would definitely come and build, create like a builder for, for all my texts and say, this is, this is what my texts require. Um, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I know you're gonna kill me for not doing that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's just a second. Um, yes, that is, so then I'd have my text here and then I come and just extend my text over there. So then I'll say, this is what my text will have, my alignment and my overflow. And, and that's just it. And then now when I come and create it, I'll say, this is not the upper header. So then if I am calling, this is the, it's, it's actually taking, remember my theme dot that file, so it's actually taking the properties of the upper header, and that's what I'm going to use for all my upper headers. Um, and so I'm sort of like double creating all of them. Uh, sorry, my typos, this is when I was typing really fast. Uh, and then description text is also the same thing. I mean, uh, I'll share the link, you can actually visit it on my GitHub handle. And so once you build this, so then you have a description text, uh, and then I have my title for like all the titles that I'm going to have. So then this is this is one thing that I've done. So I've, I've, I've created, um, I've created, I've, I've already created now like my text widgets, right? Um, and so I'm happy with my text widgets. But then you remember when I'm creating all of this, if you look at my home, the dot, it's really black. Like it's deliberately black. There's nothing there. I do not want to run anything there. The project structure that you'll see me use here is is one where um one second oh yeah so this is the pub spec the one that was telling you um you add your fonts and your family uh types here and then um one second so if you look at the structure that i'm following is i create a file called utils and so for me utils will be every other thing these are the utilities so um how to classify these are they either these are things that i'm going to use it all the time so for instance like common the utilities that i need when I'm developing applications and then in my common folder i will have my buttons there and then after i have my commons folder one thing i'll put is now put the different types of um uh the tokens i'll put my tokens in the commons folder and then after the utils, then now I come and create another one called a component, and then I can easily be calling all those components inside. So, <coughs> sorry. So let's take an example of um, of uh, let's take a good example of of the text. Um, so leave the buttons alone. Let's just forget the buttons for now. Uh, but let's let's think about. Let's, let's look at the text, and I've done the text here, but then I want to see how do the text look like. So one of the quickest things you can do is inside this test folder, you can easily just build a small app that you can easily test all these widgets before you actually use them. When other developers are coming within the team, and I saw it when I was joining the team, is 
I have like an element that's gallery. So I have like a gallery thing. And this is literally just like an app that you can easily build. And it's really um, has like, I'm using the theme. And so this theme uh, is just a component gallery. And so when you run the whole component gallery, what you end up having is, what are the components that I'm using within my application? If you remember from my slide, I talked about, you could have like that card component. So then you'd have, you'd come and say, okay, cool. In my utils, I have a component common components that I'm reusing all over, and I have something called a card. And so for this card, I'll come here and do a test, and so I'll come and put it here, and I'll call it a job card. Uh, there's also another type of card, for instance, the ones that appear in the list. So that also I'll come and test and put it here. So it's the same thing when I'm doing this. So then when I come to the text bit, um, a good example for this is I'll come and say, okay, cool, I'm building a UI. Uh, and this, the way it looks like essentially is, if I can pull this up uh, for you to see, uh, when I run it, is, it looks like this. Um, and so this is the element gallery. Literally this app here uh, with all of these many lines of code. So don't worry, you know, normally there's like this rule, you could have a rule that, yeah, just have very small, very few lines of code in every like dot, dot file. So that it helps you like focus. Uh, the only thing here I was doing was to break this down into different classes, uh, very small, small like widgets and stuff, like, like a screen is, you know, it's like this very few lines of code just explains how it looks like. So, so what I do is I know I'm going to have text, buttons, lists, info, and like that. It's like very easy to use and build. And so when I come to the gallery, so the root here is I'm literally reusing all the components that I was using before. Um, and so for the text, it's a very good example for me to see am I, is it actually working or not? And so this is just the app bar header. And so this is what it is. So then to test this is that if you click on this list item called text, when I get in, you see uh, in the text gallery is if someone wants to come and implement, uh, for instance here, remember this is title, so I'm just gonna put all of this here. Um, sorry, let me just minimize all of this. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing this like this. This is not like a client project or anything like that. It's just like a side project. Uh, to enable me learn like different things. Um, it's, it's a thing that I quickly, like I've learned like in software development, like it's, if if I was doing this so that I sort of like understand um, a concept that was being talked about in my place of work. And it was, it was really, really important for me to easily go and say, look, let me try and build something so that I easily understand what is exactly going on at the place of work so that I'm not committing this code that's there. So then it's, I, I really love doing it. I break off, do something that so that it helps me understand so that when I'm writing the code, I'm actually really quick. Uh, so, so this is like the text item. So then you have a header, and this is the header here. And then you have a description, which is this one here. And then you have a title, which is here. Um, body text is also over here. Um, and then you have an upper header, which is over here. And you have an upper description. And, and all of these types of text is like, I'm going through um, my UI designs, all of them. And I'm just like looking at, hey, what kind of text appears here? What kind of text is here? Like for instance, now if I have to build this, the only thing I'll have to think about is how do I change the color? And so you have the lead product manager, which will definitely have to take something of a title here. Um, and then I put it there. So then if I feel like when I build the card and I feel like, look, that size is not something that makes me happy, I remove it. Something like Tokyo, Japan, part-time contract, everything is everything to do with the body text. Um, I mean, it's the same, same move that you come and see in all of these UIs that you have here. So the same thing to do with like UX designer, you know, product design, all those. And so I'm moving through um, all of them and picking out like what are the types of text that are being used here? Um, do they look the same? This is like a very good example. This is what I actually started with. And so I have, um, if you look at this one, and so I have, I could easily say, look, find your creative job is the header. Uh, good morning, Alex. That could easily become uh, my title. Uh, and then I come here, popular jobs. Could again take that role either of a header or a title. And then you have recent jobs, show all, could be a description. Up by description is I'm trying to look for that screen. Yeah, anything that is something I could even use it here, where there's this one here by here or San Diego could also be description. And so that that's what you do. So then you break down this whole UI 
into this very small tokens. And then I can easily take the tokens now and say, okay, now if I want to build a button, it will be really straightforward where I just come and build out the button. Uh, I need to confirm if I've done, no, I've already done the button. So, and so, uh, yeah, and so that's the same thing. Look at the buttons. It's the same, same thing. So then you have description, you have apply now, description, uh, delivered, same thing. Um, uh, let me confirm where that design is. <clears throat> yeah, apply now is here. So this red color again, I have to go and make another button and call it apply now, put it here. And so because also I have that, um, the fact that I'm working with different ones, I'll have to think about that. So then you have here for like delivered is here. Uh, so I have to build others for like a flat button. Like you have a flat button already here that I already started building. And I'm like, okay, cool. This ones look like a flat button. I could easily use this again there. Um, and so those are the, so far you can see how now, if I'm building the button, um, as an example, if you look at the button now, for the button code, the button code would look um, like that. So then I'd have my button black there, and then I'd have my button red there, and then I have my uh, button build there. So what I do is, you definitely have a default button within Flutter. And so you, you're either looking at a raised button, which is here. Uh, and this is like within the Flutter, within Flutter code itself, it exists. And so you have a raised button, which comes with, uh, I think it's material design. Yes, cool. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm just taking that property and just extending it and saying, look, I'm taking that raised button, but then what I'm doing here is I'm adding these custom properties. And so I do not want a developer who's gonna come into the team or someone who wants to pick up this work to come in and easily change or like start editing their own things or putting their own color, changing very small things. Like I'll give you a good example, like a border radius can start to affect so many things when someone else starts to work. Uh, you tell them like you need to have a border radius there. Uh, you need a text color, you need this. That when someone is coding, they don't forget and say, no, 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 that one was the case. And so you see, because I fixed it as 13, it's going to be uniform all over. So that thing becomes the same. Again, I can modify this code further by adding like a scale, scaling element here so that like as it changes to different types, it can change there. Uh, same thing to the padding that I'm putting there. It's like, what's the padding I want to have? Let it be consistent all through. And not that when another developer comes, they feel like, no, 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 no. We could use 13, we could use 15. No, it stays the same all through. Um, and so that's what, that's what would happen. And so once you have all of this, if I wanted to build a UI, now at the end of it, or let's say if I wanted to build this UI, it would really be me picking out that and putting it there. Now, implementation of that this buttons here that you're seeing, um, I'll show you, is that someone asked, so are you writing all those many lines of code? No. Because I've written all of this here when I'm building my button, for like button red, for instance, because I have all of this here, the only all these 57 to 80 and 80 that I've used here make me that when I'm coming to implement my button red, for instance, is here. I will just put it as that. One is I'll give it, um, let me just make this bigger. Yeah, okay, cool, there it is. Um, so I'd have, in my button red, I'd have, um, there you go, that's the only, those are the only lines that I would need to have so that I implement button red. And so even in my run here, if I tap button red, again, this is just a test. So it tells me I tapped my button here. So then it's like, it's, it's already works the way it is. And the only line I needed to do is I call this button red here, um, which again will require like different things. So then if I don't put the label or all of these things, I think by now you guys would know, uh, it would actually be screaming and telling me, look, these are the two things that are actually required so that you can implement a button. Um, and if they are not there, it can start throwing errors. Um, so that's, that's, that's how you would actually implement this. And so what you've done now is you have this design system that is made up of all of these small widget components and also this theme of that file that has you know, like all the scholars explained from top to bottom. So that's even if you're writing your code, it's actually, it's the same all through. There's no these huge changes that someone might be wondering, hey, 
what what's happening here, what's happening there, you know, and things like that. So um, if I can resume, let me just resume the presentation. So 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 that's like that's like the code. That's how the code looks like. And you can find the code on GitHub. Um, it's called the find that's a project I'm still working on. Um, it's going to be a fully fledged um application that enables you to look for all this like jobs and if you see and someone can add and I mean like we'll see where it goes from there so you can do your pull requests uh and stuff if you feel like you want to actually help out in like doing it you can spy you can share it whatever you can tweet it depends um so why 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 not use a design system it's the first time is that it will really take time to implement so don't fool yourself that you're going to sit down and easily finish so um this is like a double-edged sword in terms of like time to implement because initially when you start out um you'll feel like why am i writing this this is like so much work oh my god it's just like a text they can easily use like a text and just like change the color the size of the see and so it feels like why am i writing this especially when you're starting out a project the other thing that it will feel like it's repetitive tasks um like they're doing the same thing over and over and over again um but then yeah that's that's the thing that you start to feel uh the other thing is that it's boring especially when you're starting out because then you're wondering like i've been writing code for some time i should have probably implemented like 10 uis or something like that uh but they're like long-term benefits of this so why would i use it is because it saves time i know i said it might take a lot of time but then it saves overall time in that by the time now you start implementing and then you're talking about like okay cool so i have to implement a ui a ui is really faster compared to anything um implementing a, a whole ui screen is faster than previously um the other thing is that it enables faster code reviews and obviously because now the focus is more or less like okay did you do this here did you obviously implementing the same buttons that were used before so now you're thinking about other things like the overall UI padding of the whole screen and things like that. Um, so the other thing is that we start reducing battles, especially between devs and designers, uh, and then also between product managers and developers themselves. So then you don't have this enmity that will exist between the designers and developers, because if you've not implemented the font size that was given to you, obviously there's going to be a problem. And then again, you see, it's easy for you to change these things when they're still being done than waiting till the end and then the designer says no you get the notice this design that i wanted um so that's the thing um and then it also helps with scaling um so if you have to scale your design or like you scale your application um and especially us who are doing um um apps uh that are obviously cross-platform and multi-platform um you have to think about okay cool is it the same thing there so if you look at dev side is that it is it is more on Kotlin side it's, i think there is a multi-platform component and then now with with flutter it's like you just write that code once do your ui design and then you can easily scale it to everyone so um i guess like using this is actually a good idea so it is actually save you time and all those benefits that i've talked about so over and above that Thank you so much, Geekstock, uh, from the bottom of my heart. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if there are any questions, but I am done. Manu, I think I will hand it over back to you. Yeah, so. I, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Frank, for that. For I think uh, we love like, uh, say, five minutes for questions. And I think there's already one in the chats which you can respond to, as others maybe. Um, I'm, I'm trying to understand how to get that. Okay, let me stop sharing. And then I go to the chats. So, oh yeah, I've seen the chats. They're like 13 and stuff. They're many. Okay. Ah, okay, cool. So let me, let me, let me change. Um, uh, huh. Colors, I've seen colors. Uh, job finder. Okay, cool. Yeah, not bus, bus. Okay, okay, this was like a conversation on colors. I missed all of this. <laughs> okay, uh, is there a standard way to discern what set of colors to use in your UI, or is this entirely dependent on the good taste? I, I would actually say that it depends on the designers more than the good taste. Uh, and so, that bit, if you're a developer, your work, and this is something I learned at my place of work, is that your work is to bring, no matter how hard something is, is and I've come to enjoy it, is like implementing that hard thing is actually fun. So. You go through all these rounds of of like building things that actually start to make sense or they don't make sense. Um, and so when it comes to like uh, colors, set of colors that you can use in your UI, um, I think there's like guides. For instance, if you're building something to do with dentists, I think that's something that I really like to give as an example. Why would you use color red? You know, um, and you'll see most of the dentists do not have color red there. 
And the reason why they don't have color red is because they, they really like to scare people. Look at the very top children's hospitals also. They don't have color red. They will not put any photos to do with the injection. They won't put that because they know the kids will see those injections and the kids will start, they want to run away. Um, and so and so that's that's the thing that you can easily start to avoid, like the, the, those colors that would really look weird. Um, the best thing for this would probably do more research on, um, it's called color theory or the psychology of color. Uh, if I'm not wrong, there's a, there's a documentary or there's a course from Linda about it. Um, I'm trying to remember where I actually saw that, but I know I know it's like it's there, definitely it's actually there. So yeah. Um Danvik said he had a question. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you're talking, Danvik. Okay, Danvik talk. Are you from? I hope you're doing well. So um, oh, yes. the question is this: I noticed that you, especially when developing an app that uses material design, you uh conspicuous no not mentioned anything to do with the material, uh, using the material theming, because I really find that useful. As much as I have my own design system, I usually make use of uh, the material theme, because there's something like, uh, let's say I'm designing things to do with cards. I can put in one place the radius of the card so that I don't, anywhere within the app, when I create a card, it is going to have that radius. That is something that I've found, especially, these are questions that usually I, I maintain a package, a forms package, and these are questions that people usually ask. But I always go just tell them, like, you don't need to style everywhere. For example, uh, putting a primary color, you can put the, like, uh, the material primary color so that you don't have to set it e elsewhere. Where you need to change it, you just override it. So I've noticed that you haven't mentioned anything to do with material. So if someone is using material, as much as I would have my own uh, design system, I would also include material theming because it helps a lot. It helps a lot with a lot of repetition. So that when you build once, let's say for example, I want a radius for all my, radi all my I have a fancy radius for all my raised buttons or flat buttons. I can just set it once and everywhere I build, maybe I want a red one or a blue one, but the radius, I don't have to specify it because it has, it, is been, it has been specified in my material theme. So I think that is something I wanted to mention to anyone who is building. It helps you a lot if you actually use the material theme to set anything within your app just once. And it is, since most designers are, use, have a, a thing for consistency, that is a, that is a very good place to include consistency in your app. So thank you. That's just a comment, more of a comment than a question. And now yeah. my question would be like, why why wouldn't you use material theming? Oh, no, no, okay. So, so it's important for me to say something. <laughs> so um, when when you when you decide to use a design system, you're not you're not fighting with the default um um uh like the default material design because i'll tell you the truth the, the very good uh designers will not move there's some colors they won't give you deliberately because they know that this color already exists within material design so for instance if they're using the blue for flatter they don't need to give you another blue and then you call it a different color um but 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 the thing the thing that i think most i've seen most people prefer to do is obviously fine uh, I'll have my default ones. The default ones will be the ones that material design is. Then if I want to override is when now I create my own, like a whole theming um, library or my own design system that is not against it. Because you see, with all design systems, you have to base it from somewhere. You're either taking the default material design style that you want to use within material design and then using it elsewhere, or you want the look and feel of your application to look like the way um, uh, for instance, the font that Apple uses, SF Pro. So you want it to exist all through within your application. So then for, for me, it's more, um, it's, it's actually a point to note. I, the reason why I definitely avoided it that week is because of one thing. Uh, I know like default when people are building the applications, they will use uh, material uh, design. And, and definitely like there's, there's a lot of things that someone starts to cover. I think as even this project is going to like evolve and become bigger and bigger and bigger, that's when you start to see like, okay, so this is this is actually how it is. But I would actually say, don't, 
there's a the, the reason why actually I would I would not why I was saying that I would not use uh, like uh, the 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 design system is if you get into a team and then you notice like why are we doing these things that already are being done by the default one. So let me give you an example. You can build um, cards exist uh, uh, as 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 widgets within a flat itself. If there's nothing you're changing but it's only text, why should you build another one? You know. Um, uh, the default text if your text is just going to be the same text i don't see the reason why you need to change it if it's just going to be the same thing as the latest but if there are changes that are being made some very small alterations that according to you if you put the default text on or on it's going to look differently or your def the default cut that is there within flutter looks different um from the designs that the designers have given you then please go ahead and use the design system but don't don't forget that at the end of it all, even as you're building this application, is that the UI that you're building it for needs to be something that the web people or the mobile people can actually understand as they use it. So then if you have icons, for instance, if you have text, sorry, if you have different kinds of text and layouts, and even time, things to do with like back buttons and things like that, you have to think about, okay, how does how is this thing going to look like in my uh ios device in my android device or in the web device and stuff so yeah but thanks for the comment <laughs> uh is there any other question no i don't think there's any other question yeah there's no there's no there's no question manu i think i hand it back to you uh okay so i think uh i'm gonna the questions i think Thank you, Frank, for the time and uh, for every, everybody who, who managed to, to join. And I have to apologize again uh, for starting late because KPLC value more evil. So, so I think this month has been awesome. We had uh, three flatter uh, sessions, and I think uh, for the number of flatter guys, I think it's something we can do again some other time maybe increasing the number of presentations because there have been some awesome presentations. So this uh, video uh, will be up on uh, YouTube after a week of this. So, so again, I think uh, after this, uh, uh, for Geekstock Thursday, we have, say, November for, we have November for the last set of sessions then uh, so for the for next month we'll be doing Django sessions so it is also been requested so much by the community so yeah thank you guys so I think I'll just stop the recording yeah I'll just stop the recording then you can you can stay uh, for some time so thank you guys